Scotty McClue, live on Facebook just for you, dinky do. This is the second of our live Facebook shows, so I hope you're going to enjoy it. We're here as long as you can be bothered with it, and um, tell everybody about this programme right now. So tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue, live on Facebook, just for you, dinky do. Very, very important. So, if you're watching right now, if you can let me know, uh, get onto your Facebook, make a few comments, and tell me what is what. David Hemmonsley is watching, Callum Slight's watching, Edith Van Dimplebottom is watching, Derek McIntyre's watching, Eddie Freeman, Kevin Malcolm McGregor, Sandy Pratt. And oh my goodness, the number of people watching you is increasing. And uh, Joe Hickey is watching Andy Taylor, William Black, Rob Dunn. And oh my goodness me, this is absolutely massive. As I say, folks, this is just the second time we've tried Facebook Live. So there you go. Now, um, I hope I've not got too big a fizzog coming up here. That's the that's the important thing. We don't want too much of that because we want you to be able to be quite comfortable with what's going on. So any of your comments there, Rob Dunn, you're the man, Scotty. Thanks for that, Rob. Very, very important. A conversation starter, 10 comments right away. Logan Day is watching in America there. Dinky Do, Scotty McClure, says Stephen Fiona Allen. Evening, Scotty. Evening to you, Fiona. This is fantastic. And uh, Alder Smith, Davy Purvis, you're on, Scotty. If you can hear me loud and clear, do me, let me know. Thanks for all the kisses, all the wee hearts going across the screen there. That is absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you, I'm just having a quick look. Oh, yes. There we are. I disappeared. I'm back. Don't worry about that. Um, you were all asking about my mittens last week. So I have my mittens with me. Very, very important on a cold evening like it is in the studio here. There you go. The Scotty McClue mitts. <laughs> Dinky do just for you. Now, you've got a job here, folks. You have to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook. This is the big one. It's a global show. So I'm probably talking to the biggest audience I've ever had. And I've had audiences of several million people. Uh, but uh, here we are. So this is absolutely fantastic. It's great to be with you. And we've got a lot to get through tonight, a lot to talk about tonight. So we'll see how long we go. Obviously, we just make the show last a few minutes. We uh, are thinking last week was so successful. It was the first time completely unannounced. So there you are. I've got 30 quid's worth of underwear on, says Edith Van Dimplebottom. Oh, Edith. <laughs> You're making me blush. And uh, who needs radio, says George Raffin. <laughs> Eric Lowe's watching. Lovely to see you. James Fitton's watching. Stuart Weir's watching. Deborah K. Cabela is watching. Try and let me know, guys. <coughs> now see what you've done. Try and let me know where you are um, watching from. Say a big hello to Tina Bruch, says Andrew MacDonald. Oh, Tina Bruch, you can't beat it. The new road over to Tina Bruch. How marvellous was that? Time to get the show on the road, Scotty, says Amanda Jean. Thank you very much, Amanda Jean. I'll just give you a big thumbs up there. Mary Ballantyne, hello, I made it. James Fitton, I'm always watching. Lol, he says, this is great. Laugh out loud. Dinky do, mate, says Jim Clark. Edith is saying, the heat is too big to fit in the toilet. <laughs> Glasgow East, Martin Monaghan, uh, Callum Slight, David Steele, thank you, my lord. Uh, Colin Roger, William Sinclair, Andy Taylor, Brad Yule, nice one, Scotty. You are live to the world. This is tremendous. We're live globally. And, um, oh gosh, 50 comments right away. You shouldn't have any thick heads on here tonight, pal. I'm watching from Newborough. Is that Newborough and Fife? Logan's in Indiana. 
Indiana wants me, but I can't go back there. Jerry's in Uddingston, Dinky Doo Scotty from Paisley Brian McWilliams there. Andy McCrory, Dinky Doo from Johnston Scotty. James Fitton is in Cornwall. That's tremendous. I, I likes to know you're there, James, you know, because I likes Cornwall. I don't know where you are tell of this show, but you've heard tell of it and you're here with us. And that's fantastic. I say, oh, yes, I. Uh, hello, a big Scotty hello from the big city of Windygates and Fife. Good luck, bud. Oh, that's tremendous. Lawrence is in the Isle of Lewis. He's in Stornavy. Hello, how are you getting on? Come on, ha, oh, ha, match, hey, Lawrence. And uh, Freddie Finlay is in Perth. Stu Brenny hasn't told us. Joe Hickey's in Falkirk. Stu, oh, Stu has told us. I am in Glasgow, he says. Kevin Kerr and Babs from Kennaway in Fife. You're a top bloke, Scotty. Uh, I know from, from when you worked at EMAP, says James. Yes, absolutely. I used to work at EMAP. I've worked at 35 radio stations throughout the UK. And to me, UK radio is wonderful. But what's happening at the moment, they're kind of resting on their laurels, I feel. And they're just getting young people in to put in a playlist of the same Half a dozen, few songs, round it goes, jukebox, jukebox radio. Where's the personalities? Where are all the eccentrics that we used to tune into the radio to listen to? Well, your answer, right here, live on Facebook. I am your man. I'm not saying I'm an eccentric, right? I'm not saying that. I'm not actually saying that. Do you like the mitts? They've got the mitts on. A quick prayer with the mitts on. No problem. Sorted. Steph McElheron's watching. <laughs> Jordan of Inversnecke, how I, nice to hear that you're up there in Inverness now, Jordan. That's marvellous. I'm just having a wee look here, folks. I've got the screen up as well from the Facebook. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, uh, oh, that was another Irish accent there. What are you about, you little man there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Paul Mungle, I'm off to bed. Night, night, Paul, bye-bye. Uh, can you say hello to my friend Anita, please? Yes, we can. Uh, Freddie Finlay from Scott FM, Edinburgh here members. Radio's now massively centralised crap with no personality. What a thing to say. Definitely need to turn in up at 4am. Can't wait for the next one, says Kelvin Malcolm McGregor. Kevin Malcolm McGregor, he is. he's a Kilmarnock man. He supports Kilmarnock. And then um, I would imagine he rings up just to check when the kickoff is. There's Gordon, who's in the big hoose HMP. Scotty, Tim, but too loud and clear, says Willie Black. Andrew Gill's watching. Couldn't agree more. Radio's become monotonous and very samey. All channels play the same tracks all day. Scotty, can you give a shout out to my son Cameron Steele, says David Steele. I've told him he'll learn a lot from you, lol, just like I did. Yes, information, education, entertainment. That's what Scotty McClue is about just for you, dinky do. Now, the first thing, let's get a few rules straight. No swearing, please, because we are guests in people's houses throughout the world. So we don't want to say that we are a bunch of swearers, foul-mouthed people who have a limited vocabulary. That would be unacceptable. So no swearing, I say, very, very important. Also, um, can you follow Scotty McClue on Twitter? We have a massive Twitter account. We're on Facebook with several pages. So look up Scotty McClue, go and like the pages, spread the word, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue on Facebook Live, Sunday nights, 10 o'clock sharp. We also need to talk about does the time actually suit you because you are the viewers, you are the people, you are the ones who are important. I sometimes wish that the BBC did the same for its license payers and said, guys, you run the show, you tell us what you want quite nice uh, although i saw a nice job coming up at the bbc the controller of bbc scotland so should old McClue stick an application in mm -hmm. what do you think 30 years experience television and radio entertainment information education i am your man linked of course to uh, the late john reith the man who started it all in 1922 with a staff of four did you know that the bbc was the british broadcasting company and it had a staff of 
before, he had a managing director, or a manager, I should say, a general manager, that was John Reith from Glasgow, and uh, who was knighted at the age of 37, I think, not bad. And um, he had a secretary, there was a program controller and an engineer, four of them. And of course there were shares in it. I think there was half a dozen companies. One of them was Metro Vickers in Manchester. Could you imagine owning a sixth of the BBC? Ooh, when do you cash in your chips though? That's the thing. Right, uh, you should try Periscope live screening. Uh, I followed on Twitter and Facebook, says Robbie. Thanks for that. Sally Baboots watching uh, very much, says David. Go for it. Fat controller, says William Black. Thank you, William. That's a bit harsh. Harsh, harsh but fair. I don't mind. Uh, so there we are. Just do another little refresh, guys. Uh, very, very important. Um, I'm doing the lot myself. I haven't got a wizard of the big switchboard here, and I haven't got a lovable lassie of the big switchboard. So we're just letting everybody know. Uh, we know Scotty is live right now. Um, I'll just pop that off. There we are. Ah, yes, there we go. Now, uh, some very, very good stuff from last week, folks. So thank you very much for that. That was tremendous. Been highly, highly successful, this. And uh, I just think it's because people are always looking for something different. And it, it makes me laugh when people say, oh, no, no, you, you, you've been about a long time. No, they're looking, they're looking for young people now to entertain you. <laughs> No, not your, your old fellows in flat caps. <laughs> well, you tell that to the Still Game Brigade because they're back on next Friday. I think it is Friday, the 7th of October. Still Game, great Scottish comedy. And uh, if you're watching or listening, guys, dinky do to you, I say. This is Scotty McClure just for you. So if you can do that, folks, if you can like and share and share and share and share and do it for me, please don't sit back and think, oh, I'm not bothered sharing that. For goodness sake. Share it. Tell everybody because this gives us all a big flat platform, a big flat form. Did you like that there? A slip of the tongue. Um, a big platform for have, having a bit of a catch-up, having a bit of a chat, something that's quite rare nowadays, so an actual talk show on television where you, the people, call the shots. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Scotty, you're still game. Scotty, you're still game. Let's talk about North Korea, says Paul Mungo. Well, come on, Paul. On you come, and we'll talk about North Korea. There's talk of maybe taking a couple of calls on the show. Uh, so there you are. I was talking about that one my engineering pals today. But no, no, that's quite doable, Scotty, if you wanted to do that. Hello, Scotty. I first heard you on Red Rose Radio. It was the highlight of my night listening to you. We need a referendum to get Scotty out and back on the radio, says Graham McIntosh. Thanks very much. Uh, still game rules the comedy scene, says Stuart. Absolutely. That came in after I had appeared. So they obviously found that gentlemen in flat caps um, telling a few funnies was uh, was big, big business. You should go for a cameo role in Still Game, dude, says Robbie Dunn. Oh, thank you very much, Rob. Jim Coyle says, how about talking about our independence? Well, I'm not a political animal, as you know, but there's absolutely no reason why Scotland could not be independent. Scotland's had 309 years of a treaty of union with the UK, and there's absolutely no reason economically why Scotland shouldn't be independent. So think about it, running your own stuff. Theresa May today was just saying, we'll get out of Europe, talking about the UK, of course, and we'll be independent. We'll have the freedom to make our own decisions. So she will know how the Scots feel about uh, getting out and being free from uh, uh, you know having decisions made elsewhere the other thing we could do is if people are absolutely wanting uh, the united kingdom because remember there's no country called britain uh, britain is amalgam of four countries and um, there's there's no such place as uh, you know there's no country as the united kingdom that's just four countries that have got together and said you know, should we uh, see how we get on together? And perhaps now after 309 years, they're saying it's time to split up. The only thing I would say to the Scottish national people is uh, remember to keep the Queen. Once you muck about with the Crown, there's no connection between 1707, the Union of the Parliaments, and 1603, the Union of the Crowns. The Crown, it was a Scottish thing. It was a Scottish monarch that started the joint monarchy with the Union of the Crowns in 1603. So don't include that 
in your right nationalist agenda because if you do nationalism and independence gets kicked into the long grass forever so if you can say look we're not needing to even bother about that the queen is the queen of scotland and that's absolutely fine that is dinky do and then you can get on with having your independence uh, because really uh, the uh, the parties of course the labor party the conservative party that lot they need to push for independence as well otherwise you will find that the SNP will be in government forever and a day so that's uh, that's what I'm saying about independence uh, make sure you keep the crown but by all means push for independence because it makes complete economic sense and um, you know sending probably about 40 billion pounds down to uh, to the central government every year and that could be spent in Scotland feeding the children so think about that one there we are that's one for the Scots uh, Amanda you crazy says William Black Jim's watching not so Great Britain says Freddie uh, Eliza Jane Caldwell's watching hello Eliza Jane lovely to see you William Black says better together but in actual fact that's been disproved William so <laughs> sadly they're not better together um can the north of england join scotland for independence as christopher anthony smith i don't see why not because they, they were talking about rebuilding hadrian's wall i think if you're rebuilding hadrian's wall rebuild it um right south of yorkshire and of the yorkshire people in you know part of scotland south yorkshire and um, scotty mcclue is massive in yorkshire and in south yorkshire so dinky do i say to thee in yorkshire and also, Andy Taylor, the Southport phone call was brilliant. Oh, now, get yourselves onto YouTube, Scotty McClue, and listen to Scotty McClue talking to a gentleman from Southport. So there you are. You will get a huge smile. I will put that up for you. But uh, it's very, very funny. Scotty, it doesn't matter if Scotland get independence. You'll never be free. You'll still have rulers. It never changes. Freedom begins with freeing the mind. No continuously supporting a monarch. It's not a question of supporting the monarch. It's a question of saying, no, the monarchy do a tremendous amount for bringing in money. They cost us 52 pence a year. It's an absolute irrelevancy to be discussing the monarch and what have you. You know, there's no problem there. If you want to go onto YouTube, you'll see Scotty McClure, that's my good self, explaining the monarchy to you so very very important so go on to scotty mcclure's channel on youtube and uh, make sure you subscribe it doesn't cost you anything you just click subscribe because i've got quarter of a million viewers on there and about 700 subscribers now do you get it do you see there's an element of disparity there so some people have been a wee bit lazy about just clicking subscribe it doesn't cost you you don't have to pay anything and of course following scotty mcclue on facebook tell everyone about this show right now can everyone just share the live show on facebook if everyone shares it now i'm talking about everybody there if everybody shares it then um who knows where it might lead to you know it's fantastic i mean we might speak to facebook themselves and say look you really want to be having a live talk show once a week on facebook for everybody on facebook all your facebook people i will present it and we will have dinky do chat and that's what it's all about you know i mean you know th this kind of nonsense about oh no no talk shows oh the world has changed the world has not changed one iota. My dear grandfather he was born in 1881. I had him till I was 14. Wonderful man, man of huge, huge wisdom and intellect. And um, he said to me, you know, my boy, there's nothing new under the sun. And he had a point. He actually had a point, did Grandpa. Wonderful man. So that was him. That was Neil. 1881. He made uh, 89. He made almost 90. Tremendous stuff. Uh, Christopher Anthony Smith likes the video. Thank you very much, Christopher Anthony Smith. I shall just uh, share again. There we go. Just sharing on the Facebook page as I go, folks. Can you start a modern day Radio Caroline? Radio Caroline out on a boat, says George Raffin. Well, I think you've got your marina fences, laws. You see, once you start something that's really great fun, that everybody loves, particularly the young people. They should have put me on BBC Radio 1 years ago because my audience was massive, massive young people, and it still is. 
And that's tremendous because the young people need to take a telling. And there's nobody gives them more of a telling than me, Scotty McClue, Dinky Doo, just for you, live on Facebook. Sunday nights, 10 o'clock sharp. This is only our second one. So we're seeing how it goes. But tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. If you're listening in India, Africa, Canada, America, Madagascar, Tasmania, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Russia, China, Japan, the Tierra del Fuego, after two, one, two. What a place that is, Scotty. The Tierra del Fuego, the land of fire. Frozen land, right down at the bottom of Cape Horn there, where fires break out, spontaneous combustion. Incredible. Tierra del Fuego. So if you're listening in the Tierra del Fuego, dinky do if you're in Mexico, uh, all these places, if you're listening out in China, then uh, Han Hao, Han Hao, I say to you, in China, and dinky do. And they uh, also loved and shared this. Three tell ten to tell ten to tell ten to tell ten, says Amanda. Captain Pugwash says, Oh, Atlantic 252 Radio. Do you remember that, says Freddie Finlay? I do. I remember all radio. I've probably been been on most radio. I haven't been Atlantic 252. That was a medium wave station. So, sorry, it was a long wave station. I beg your pardon. Long wave station over in uh, in Ireland there. It was, it was based and it was 252 metres on the long wave. Am I right or am I right? Let me know. Facebook me, for goodness sake. Um, who else have we got? Thank you for the mention, Scotty. Good man, says George. Not at all. Nini Carr is watching. Jason Williams is watching. Now, folks, keep sharing and sharing and sharing this. It's very, very important. Donald Grant there um, on the 45%. Very nice for that. 45% of people voted yes to an independent Scotland. And it was a very, very close run thing. And then they sent an ex-Prime Minister up to make a ridiculous speech. And uh, a lot of people were nervous. You know, I think really your no voters were people who, they lacked confidence. That's the thing, that's what I'm saying. And uh, I've heard that independence could be as high now as 72% of Scottish people realise that they'd been duped at the uh, at the referendum. You know, they'd been conned into voting no because they'd been told they were going to be better together. And of course, that hasn't been the case. So there you go. Uh, Scotty, where are you right now? So else is Amanda, no problem at all. Tom Morton, um, my friend Tom Morton, a wonderful man who has a show on Saturday nights. He's based in Shetland. And he has a show Facebook Live on Saturday nights at 8 o'clock. So if you get a chance to tune in to Tom, Tom Morton, he plays wonderful music. It's all licensed music and he plays wonderful music. Tom Morton, a massive, massive name in the radio industry. Very, very big in the BBC in his day, of course. Uh, well, his day is still here. What am I talking about, Tom? I do apologise. Your day, your day is even bigger now because you're live on Facebook. So Tom has got a global show uh, from Shetland, live on a Saturday evening, eight o'clock sharp. Get yourselves onto that as well, I say, because Facebook is the way to go. It's not the Queen, it's the ever-growing band of hangers on. Fiona, they only cost pennies, so put it out your mind, doll, seriously. Do you think the world's gone mad with the PC Brigade, Scotty, says Jim McIntyre? Yes, I do. That's what I like about your shows. You tell it like it is. The only thing is I don't actually like your support for independence. Stronger together, Scotty. No, I'm not supporting. Well, I'm supporting independence because it makes common sense. I'm not any party political. I don't have any affiliation to any party. And I think if it's a Scottish Parliament, why have you got unionist parties in it? They should all be for independence, because I'll tell you something. Labour in Scotland have virtually annihilated themselves, right? They're in the political wilderness, and they will stay there for a thousand years unless they back independence, because the founder of the Labour movement, James Keir Hardy, and his chairman, uh, Robert Bonteen Cunningham Graham, um, who uh, actually started the Scottish National Party. So the chairman of the Labour Party started the Scottish National Party, started the Scottish National Movement. And um, he knew there should be home rule 
for Scotland. Uh, so there you go, guys. You know, that's where it is. And Labour, of course, and SNP, you couldn't have got a paper between them for years and years and years. But now the Scottish National Party has got the carrot of independence. And what country doesn't want its own independence? So don't panic. Know your own mind. Uh, remember the difference between fear and danger. Fear can be imagined, right? Fear is not real. Uh, danger is real. But fear, you can take it up to any level you want. Um, the pensioners were scared by what they were told. Their pensions wouldn't be guaranteed. Well, that's a lot of rubbish, of course. The pensions would be as guaranteed as they are within the United Kingdom. Um, so I think the pensioners have had their eyes opened, says Stuart Weir. Stuart, I think you're absolutely 100% correct. I think the pensioners have had their eyes opened and they know what's what. Um, God Ritchie says, I didn't know. Amanda, this is my friend who's on Twitter, wants Scotland to become independent and to cut all ties from the UK. You see, really, let's have a look at what independence actually is. Self-administration and self-support economically. That's all it is. It doesn't need barriers or running away. It's just saying, no, no, we run our own show from Edinburgh. And really, to be quite honest, when I see Nicola Sturgeon and people like that, I think, you know, there's one of the most organised, switched on, serious politicians you could hope for. Our predecessor, Alex Salmond, marvellous, marvellous man. The only thing, the difference in Scotland, we've never really had the so-called class system. We've never fallen for the class system. And the Scottish um, people ran the British Empire for the British people. They used to actually run the British Empire um, because they were very, very good administrators because they thought nothing of saying to a viceroy or to a, a general commanding something. Here, here you moosh. You need to get your act together and get sorted. And that's the whole thing about the Scots. The man of independent mind lives and laughs at all that. These are the words of Robbie Burns, not of Scotty McClue. So I'm telling you that straight, okay? Very, very important. Gary Stevens is watching. Dinky Doo, says David Ditchfield. Ditchy, Dinky Doo to you. Another massive, massive name in the radio industry, Ditchy. A wonderful, wonderful presenter. And uh, Dinky Doo, he says. So we got a chance to hear Ditchy, David Ditchfield. Uh, very, very big uh, across the northwest of England. Gary Stevens is watching. Jason Williams, do you believe in aliens, Scotty? Have a look at me. I think you've got your answer, don't you? Which planet have I actually come from? Who knows? And where might I go after this programme? Who knows? So there you are. Uh, people should be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of the people, says Stephen Hamilton. Yes, I don't think it's a question of afraid. I don't think there should be any fear at all. There should be open communication with the people, talking to the people. Now, throughout all of the referenda in the United Kingdom, because we're broadcasting globally here, what you would find was that they didn't have a proper talk show like this, where everybody could discuss everything. Had you had a talk show, Britain might not be looking at Brexit from the European Union. Now, I'm not saying that that would be different, but it might have been. Because you could have had a talk show and you could have had all the politicians on. You could have had David Cameron, Theresa May, um, Boris, uh, Nigel Farage. You could have had all these people on talking to me, Scotty McClue, and we would have got to the bottom of it and found out what the facts were, where the truth was. Because I don't have anything to prove. I have no personal agenda. And that is a great way for a broadcaster to be. So I would have talked to these people and got the truth for you, the, the nation, the globe, the rest of the world. And that's very, very important. All right. And uh, Hollywood or Hollywood for Scotty, says Tom McGoldrick. <laughs> ah, yes, absolutely. I mean, Hollywood, I'd love to star in a couple of big movies. I watched some great movies last I watched a movie last night. Uh, I, I love the movie The Wild Geese with Richard Burton. And last night was Wild Geese 2 with Lawrence Olivier playing Rudolf Hess. And it was a suggestion that they tried to get rid of Hess, who actually landed just 
yards away from where I'm sitting right now when he came to uh, ostensibly see the Duke of Hamilton. Rudolf Hess landed, uh, or crash landed, I should say, his Messerschmitt that he was flying, crash landed just yards from where I am just now, and he was taken down to the local police station, and then he was taken over to Buchanan Castle in Stirlingshire, which is a ruin now, the Duke of Montrose's old house um, out in uh, Bonnie Stirlingshire there. And uh, that's where they took Rudolf Hess. And uh, Rudolf Hess, well, you wonder, don't you, because the landing lights were apparently on at Dungable House that night. They had their own airstrip because uh, the late Duke of Hamilton at the time was a flyer. And um, if you work out the speed of the measure Smith, I don't know what speed a measure Smith would do. I would have thought maybe 400 miles an hour. He was something like a few minutes from actually landing. And you don't know. Maybe we wouldn't have had the Second World War. Who knows? Why was S kept on his Todd in there? Maybe they didn't want him chatting. Scotty, keep up the good work. You're doing a grand job. There's nothing better than spending a Sunday night on Facebook listening to you. Thanks, Lawrence. Scotty, just out of curiosity, did you vote Remain in the EU or did you vote Leave? Well, you can see that if you look back on my Facebook, you'll see which way I went. Uh, Scotty, have you ever taken any bungs? What are your thoughts? Um, and uh, no, no, I've never taken a bung. Do I look like a man that's taken a bung? If I had taken a bung, I would probably be sitting in the Seychelles right now, you know, sunning myself. So, no, uh, that's not my thing because I have a sense of values in life. And I don't need gold and diamonds and big houses and uh, yachts in the Caribbean and things like that. I don't need all that you know i have a, a motor car in fact i've got two motor cars um and i shall tell you about my motor cars one is very very swish and it is uh 24 years old the other one is uh, even swisher and it is wait till i tell you 18 years old so i've got an 18 year old car and i've got a 22 year old car and um, that's kind of it. And the clothes you see me in, I have dressed in since I was 16. So why would Scott and Clue ever need to take a bung? Okay, folks. So there you go. But uh, what I will say, if you want to make a slight donation, you can go onto Scotty McClue's website, www.scotty-mcclue.com, and uh, you can quite securely use your PayPal and uh, make us a donation just to help keep the show going, just to help pay for equipment, etc., etc., just to improve the program and um, what have you. So if anybody's feeling a wee bit flush, and what, what I love is when maybe an old lady sends a dollar or a, or a pound or something like that it's it's fantastic it's fantastic so there you are so if you want to go on and make a donation go on to uh, scotty mcclue in fact i'll i'll put it up here for you i'll uh, what i'll do is i like that there we are i'll share it i'm just working away here folks if you see my eyes darting about it's like the early days of television which i was actually involved in um, and some of my early recordings on television, reading news and stuff, we did what was called the noddies. We had to look up and down like that because you didn't have auto cue. And then the auto cue that came in for us was a little camera. I'll just put the website up. dot Scotty, and you don't have to give anything. It's just if you're feeling a wee bit flush and you think, I like this boy, um, you know, that would be helpful. Um, so I'll just I'll just put that up. There you go. And um, that's you got on Facebook, you have got. Scotty, do you think 9-11 was an inside job? Why? Why would they do that? I mean, because conspiracy theories, you can, you can go on making them up and making them up and making them up. But to be quite honest with you, you know, I mean, I don't think so. Can you see that the right way up? That's a quote from Horace. Seize the day. Carpe deum. A bit of Latin for you. Did you like that? A wee sip of tea. Uh, have a tea yourselves. Please feel free to have a tea yourselves. Don't be standing on ceremony here. Um, www.scottyhyphenmcclue.com Scotty McClue haggis with neeps and tatties fund, says Amanda. <laughs> As I say, don't feel you have to give anything. It just says 
that we're trying to get the show on the road so if you've got a spare quid or a fiver or a dollar or something like that you're very very welcome uh, i saw your land rover and your labrador when you came out of oh advertising land rovers there i've run land rovers for about 25 years got your land rover and your labrador when you're coming out of q96 i used to work q96 and i had an old labrador called lord wreath after the founder of the bbc and uh, i hope it's tea and not vodka says tom yeah <laughs> it's tea tom don't worry about that yeah uh, oh there's somebody saying they thought that 9-11 uh, was an inside job uh well i don't know uh captain my captain says george raffin yes i am the captain of my soul scotty's retirement fund or beer fund it doesn't matter whichever it is uh you know if you've got a spare quid then you stick it in there my my darlings now i should be liking all your things let me see if i can do it from here i'm just doing a bit of liking um so there you go oh no i don't want that that says do you want to block them no i do not want to block you i had to block a few idiots uh the other day um who funnily enough were tories and uh they were getting themselves in an absolute panic uh, and uh, they started being rude and using uh, rude language uh, about me and i thought you know really what you need to do is never never shoot the messenger get the bus on mcclure mobile and start a roadshow fella i'll donate to that says rob it's good to see you back says ian mcmanus logan says make the media independent again i know uh you know some of these huge companies bought up all the local radio stations local radio is tremendous i uh, myself had invested very very heavily in a local radio station and um, unfortunately a complete and utter half-witted idiot joined us and caused us stushy and that was the end of that but there's i still have great hope for local radio and if people aren't so greedy i mean there was one group bought uh, bought some radio stations and a year later they were able to put 20 million pounds offshore can you imagine that you know i mean that's that's not bad going is it uh, evening scotty good to see you online says lee lee bandoni harry sam's watching hello harry dinky do now harry i think has the independence bus the yesi and yesi is doing her rounds so there you are yes it's doing her rounds scotty you're still a young laddie you're far too young to retire listen amanda forget retirement i am not interested there's another good 25 years broadcasting in me um and then we might start to take it easier you know but uh you know we're doing one night a week at the moment so it's hardly harsh is it? it's hardly harsh uh poor old clan fm's william black yes clan went uh, good evening scotty says harry good evening to you harry i hope that your tour of yes is going well with yesy there's somebody wanting to see the picture above me i'll see if i can get it for you there you go and we'll turn around and there's another one for you there's old lord wreath actually on that one uh, i'll just put this back fantastic stuff up in the studio walls here terrible isn't it it's like self-publicity you know <laughs> it makes me laugh when people sort of uh, they go conspiratorial and they go is is, is this not kind of like self-publicity we wouldn't want that in the communications industry would we now uh, so they are scotty come on admit it you're a big conspiracy theorist planes knocked down three buildings come on big man says stephen hamilton <laughs> what happened to glasgow go radio i thought you were going on there i haven't heard any more about go radio folks so i'll not comment on that uh, nobody's been in touch with me and as far as i know um you know nothing's sort of uh, moved forward in strides there so i don't really know what's happening hi scotty you're looking gallus as always thank you very much feeling very smart you know uh, very very important so there we are i'll give you a look can i hold this back in it and give you give you another look there we go how is the, oh no now you're talking now you're oh now you're talking fantastic right i'll just put that back sorry if your picture went a wee bit wobbly there folks now uh, there was a young lady called bessie she went to loch ness to see nessie she fell in the mud with a terrible thud and then nessie saw bessie all messy mm -hmm. uh good evening scotty loving a great idea keep up the good work maybe we can do a wee talk one night about yeses tour scotty says harry sam of course we can harry lovely to know what's going on you're going around the bus 
Uh, Stephen Hamilton's L107 was a superb station. Such a shame, whatever happened. You're absolutely right. It was a tragic thing that happened. It really was. But there, there's nothing you can do about it. Somebody was keener in taking my money for themselves than putting it into the station. It's a shame that that happened to you, Scotty, after all that investment um, for it to be wiped clean from your feet. Uh, the presenters worked hard to keep it rolling along. They certainly did Steph, and it was a tremendous station, and I would love to see something like that again. I'd love to have a go at that. Uh, Jason Williams, best quote ever, phone me back when your spheres descend. <laughs> the wee guy phones one night and says, Hiya, Scotty, how you doing? I says, what age are you, Sonny? Phone me back when your spheres descend. So there we are. That was the thing, right? I'll need to do a wee bit up. Here we go. Keep your comments coming, of course, if you've just joined us. A very warm welcome. What's the time, folks? Here's me sitting, chatting away, and I haven't checked the time. Uh, good Lord. 40 minutes we've been on here for. It seems like, you know, 40 seconds. Uh, tremendous stuff. Enjoying your global show, Scotty. Uh, it says everybody on here. What a terrific. 39 shares. Guys, do me a favour. Share, 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 share. And tell 10 and tell 10 and tell 10. And get talking about this programme all the time because it really is a help. Please don't take the view of, ah, oh, I'm no bothered with him. Oh, silly old fool that he is, all that stuff. Don't do that because this is important. We need to get the world talking again. Um, so there we go. Oh, tremendous. Uh, Tom's go to 22.39 is the time. Well, thanks, Tom. I just checked that. Julianne Scott, 10.40. 10.40. 10.4. What was 10.4 from? That was a sort of 10.4. And uh, Scotty, do you wear the kilt? My friend Brittany adores a fine man in a kilt. She's an Irvin, by the way. Wink, wink. Listen, uh, Amanda, you will see photos of me being the chieftain of the Bears Den and Milgai Highland Games in 2007. And they'd had uh, some famous... Chieftains. They had Red Rum, the race horse. They had Sir Douglas Bader, the air ace, the Battle of Britain pilot, Sir Douglas Bader, and uh, he was he was tremendous. They absolutely loved him. And uh, I've added my friends, Scotty says Denise Carroll. Can you play the bagpipes, Scotty? Well, I can. I could give you a tune. I'll give you my favourite tune, but I'll have to lala because I don't have the pipes on me. So what I'll give you is um, a. Now, you've got to name that tune. <laughs> this is where radio is massive. This is where communication is massive. Who knows that bagpipe tune? I will be very surprised if somebody around the globe, Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Russia, China, Japan, the whole of the United Kingdom, the whole of Europe, so there you are, uh, Madagascar, Tasmania, Australia, New Zealand. Somebody will know that tune. Whatever happened to the fine laddie on the switchboard? Yep, absolutely, the lassie. Yes, the love of a lassie of the big switchboard. And we also had the wizard of the big switchboard. Uh in for Scotty, says Julianne Scott. Oh, there we are. Uh, Nosta, I say, a Welsh lady. Uh, the lovable lassie, uh, me, says Adam. Adam Fuller's watching. Hi, Adam. Scotty, uh, there's a convoy here, says Martin Monaghan. Used to listen to you on Scott FM. Those were the days, says Tommy O'Pray. Scotty, you're obviously hit with the ladies. What's your best chat up line? Uh, my best chat up line is uh, Sorry, my dear, are you looking for me? And. Um, now then, you should release it as a single, no pipes, just diddle diddle dum. Dance with your granny. Yes, we used to have dance with your granny and your auntie Fanny. Right across the floor, when you get to the other side, shut the door. Sounds like uh, a Justin Bieber number, Scotty. 
<laughs> there was a wee man who peed in the pan, and the pan was so wee, so he peed in the sea. The sea was so wide, he peed in the Clyde, and all the wee fishies went up his backside. Oh, of course, of course. I say, right, lovely, lovely stuff, mind you. And a uh, Tum Deedle Dum song, says William Black. So they, has anybody actually got it yet? Does anybody know? What that pipe tune was i'll maybe tell you at the end of the program before we have to go so there you are i'll tell you about that we're only on uh, until uh, 11 o'clock 11 o'clock and then we push off because people are wanting to get their beds there but enough of me and i can understand why i do not have a problem with that um so there we go uh what else have we got uh, the most common rhyme uh did you ever get so angry you had to dump yourself adam i did i dare i see it I've said it now. I swore once at a guy on here. I swore. And I am not a big swearer. But I swore at a guy on here. And I, oops, I'm on the radio. And I had to press the uh, profanity device and remove that from the output before it went out. So there you go. Very, very important. I had to pro press that profanity device a lot. But um, I have no time. See, I have to say, this is one thing about Facebook. I don't like the swearers because I cannot um, send it on. I can't share it if you've sworn. There's no need for it. And I see film stars and everybody swearing on Facebook. I think, no, 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 no. We don't need that. What's better, radio or television? Well, I've done four television stations and I've done 35 radio stations. I think that tells its own story. So there you are. And they're delighted to see me. I got an email last night from the other side of the world. Very, very big establishment saying, we want you, mate. We want you. So, uh, so there you go. Tremendous. So that would be me on the telly. Um, fantastic. Keep it going, Scotty. And uh, pull all the yes people together in Scotland forever. So there you are. No, Scotland's wonderful. Scotland could be running itself. Your diddly dum could replace Robbie Shepherd's excellent show on Radio Scotland, says Michael Campbell. Oh, Robbie. Robbie Shepherd. Nay bother would tuck the floor. Aye, right you are, loons. Nay bother at all. Wonderful man. I first met Robbie Shepherd in 1984. I worked with him. And 84 was a great year. I worked with Andy Stewart. I worked for a company called Grampian Television in the north of Scotland. A tremendous, tremendous company. The chairman was uh, Sir Ian Tennant, who was also had been the chairman of uh, the governors of Gordonston School, perhaps the finest school in the world. And uh, Ian Tennant was, uh, was the chairman of Grampian Television. And um, then I also worked for a marvellous man called uh, Major Sir David Butter at Pitlochry Theatre. And uh, he was a tremendous man as well. He was also a governor of Gordonston School, uh, which is the finest school in the world. I have to say that because it's a school that was set up uh, so that world leaders had to take responsibility. It was set up after the First World War. Uh, an educationist called Kurt Hahn, who was uh, imprisoned by Hitler. And um, Ramsay MacDonald, I think, was one of the people, the first uh, British Labour Prime Minister. Ramsay MacDonald was from Lossy Mouth, and he got cut Han out of um, the jail uh, in, in, in Germany when he was imprisoned by Hitler. And cut Han, his um, nerves were a bit short, and he was over in Scotland. And somebody said, bring your school here, because he ran Salem School or Salem School in Germany, uh, where Prince Philip... Uh, I think it was a pupil in Prince Philip came to Gordonston as well. So there you go, marvellous stuff. And uh, it was set up. Cut Han was the secretary to Prince Baden. And um, they realised that people like the Kaiser, they hadn't had what you'd call a proper education. They had governors and advisors and what have you. So they wanted world leaders to uh, to be educated um, just as uh, ordinary people as uh, as one of the people and realize they had to take responsibility for their actions so i would say that's why i am a tremendous amount of time for Gordonston school the finest school in the world uh what have we got here plan fair pili oh go go silly oh go 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 the longest railway station in the world jenny did i say it right thanks for the follow scotty you have a lovely voice, Scotty, says Maureen Ormsby. Thank you, Maureen. It's very kind of you. People don't often give me a compliment. Uh, I can see why, but there we go. So get yourselves on to Scotty McClue's website, www.scotty-mcclue.com. If you're flush and you've got a few quid, feel free 
to uh, pop your card into PayPal and that will help us keep the show going. It'll get me a new bonnet, that sort of stuff. And as I say, the most touching donations, some people are obviously incredibly generous. The most touching donations are your dollar or your pound from an elderly person that goes, I haven't got a lot, but I'd like you to have this, Scotty. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. There we are, tremendous people. Now, uh, Yasmin Samura says she's uh, feeling excited, tremendous. Um, Scotty, uh, it's true, Scotty. Uh, you said it right, so I pronounced that name properly. Clan fire pewili gilly gilly go gilly. Clindrob williach and a silly o go go go. No star. Um, you've got a beautiful smile, Scotty. Thank you for that. These are these are lovely things to say. Um, Galloway in the morning was the host of Scott FM. Yes, Robin Galloway, another wonderful, wonderful broadcaster. Big name in radio. And Robin and I used to do uh, the uh, handover in the morning. Robin did the breakfast show with these wonderful wind-ups. And they uh, would do the handover. And the audience figures for the handover were through the roof. We used to break all the rules. We just pushed the door open and shouted, shut up, feathers here, and uh, and we'd just chit-chat, we'd talk about these, which uh, in Aberdeen, where Robin's from, were Hummel Dodies, so if you're wearing your Hummel Dodies, very, very important there, absolutely, uh, we'll get out in the morning, Freddie, marvellous stuff, how are we doing for time, folks, because I don't want you to have too much of a good thing, uh, you've got nine minutes, and then that's it, the game's up now, if you like this, as I say, share it and share it and share it and share it and share it. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 right throughout the world. Keep sharing. Don't give up because we will grow the numbers. Uh, and then it means that we can all get a worldwide chat every Sunday night just for a few minutes at 10 o'clock sharp. What I got there? Stuart Weir says, Scotty, good night. I need to go to bed. I'm off to Blackpool in the morning. <sighs> Scotty McClue is massive. Massive in Blackpool. So there we are with the old sand groaners there. And, um, oh no, the sand groaners are Southport, aren't they? If you're sand grown, are you Southport? If you're, um, now what are you if you're a Blackpool person? Because it's to do with the Blackpool, isn't it? Tell us that if you're a Blackpool. Lovely coupon for the radio, Scotties, as well. <laughs> well, haven't I heard that before, William? Of course. Uh, Kieran Fox is watching. Dinky doo, Kieran. Lovely to hear from you. Hey, I was your breakfast show DJ at Centre Sound in the days of Alistair Smith. Good old Alistair's dead now, sadly. Alistair passed away. Um, had to uh, break in from a first show. Remember, nobody turned up to the studio. Gareth Morrison. Lovely to hear from you, Gareth. That's right. It's uh, a long time ago, but uh, I started Central FM, as it is, and it's still on air and highly successful uh, 26 years later. So there you go. Any doubting Thomas says, did you ever work at Granada Television? Freddie, I did. I worked at Granada Television, and I remember going in to talk to um, Lucy Meacock on Granada Tonight, Granada Reports. Uh, uh, and I remember the Bernsteins, of course, uh, Mr. Sidney and Mr. Cyril, later Lord Bernstein. And... Uh, uh, I'll keep shared all the time, says Margaret Bonner. Thank you, Margaret. Sand Grounders are Southport folks. They are. And have a listen to my Southport um, video, my Southport audio on Facebook. So get yourselves onto Scotty McClure's Facebook channel uh, and uh, YouTube channel, I should say, as well. Get onto YouTube, get onto Twitter and follow Scotty. So can everybody who's watching right now look up uh, at Scotty McClure? Capital S, C O T T I E, capital M, small c, capital C, L U E, at Scotty McClue on Twitter and follow on there. Very, very important. Tell me what you saw tonight. Tell me if you like what you saw tonight. Tell me if you think we've got something here for a worldwide talk show on a Sunday evening with the rest of the globe. My friend Brittany emailed a poem to send to you, Scotty. I hope you don't mind. See more. I'll try and see more here, Amanda. Uh, right. Oh, lovely. Yes. Now that is 
Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair up thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. Till all the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun, and I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands of life shall run. And fear thee, will my only love, and fear thee, will a while, and I will come again, my love, though dwelt ten thousand miles. Robbie Burns, my love is like a red, red rose. Uh, fantastic. If you ever want to hear it sung quite stunningly beautiful, look up My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose, sung by uh, Kenneth McKellar. The late Kenneth McKellar. Kenneth died uh, just a few years ago there. Tremendous. Scotty, quick question. Um, what do you think of George Galloway standing in Glasgow East if there's a by-election? <coughs> well, George um, has the uh, mother of all talk shows, I believe. Um, although Scotty McClure is the daddy of them all. I posted that on Twitter and George has blocked me. Oh. Blocked by George Galloway. Oh, dinky do. Uh, so there you are. So George is a Labour man and Labour, of course, have all but been annihilated uh, in Scotland, certainly, and probably in the rest of the country too. So I don't know, uh, you know, whether Glasgow East... Uh, which had an SNP member of parliament. I might stand myself. Do you think Scotty McClure should stand for the uh, member of parliament for the East End of Glasgow? Would you like that? If you're listening in the East End of Glasgow, uh, let us know. Two hours of the show. Uh, Scotty, you've got five minutes, says Tom. Uh, I'm just checking that out, guys. Yeah, I've got four minutes, actually. And then I'm going to have to push off, so... Four minutes to go. I mean, I'll turn around a wee bit and then I can see the time as well. Um, and uh, Scotty, I'd love to see more of your shows. You're absolutely amazing. Very kind of you to say, dear. Very much appreciated. Make your shows two hours next time. I'd like to see more. No, I think um, it's very important to uh, just see what the nation thinks. I think you should, says Julianne Scott. I think you should stand as the Member of Parliament for uh, for Glasgow East. Uh, yes, please, says George Raffin. <laughs> Fantastic. The last I saw, George uh, Galloway. No, well, I won't read that one out, actually. <laughs> Every week, says Alan Brown. Is that Alan Brown in Washington? Uh, Fantastic. We need a show on a Friday night, says Freddie Finlay. Uh, that was hilarious, Scotty. Blocked by George Galloway. I don't imagine blocking Scotty McClure. All I'd said was, he says that he's, he's on a, a company called Talk Radio, which just been taken over by uh, Rupert Murdoch's um, News UK. And uh, that includes Talk Sport Radio. And uh, they bought it for, I think, a couple of hundred million pounds. And... Uh, they say, Scotty, the Scotty National Party. Well, you know, I did wonder about having SIP, the Scottish Independence Party, saying that Scotland could be independent, but of course under the Crown or with the Crown. You don't need to be under anything. Yes, Scotty, why not, says Margaret, why not stand for Glasgow East? You're good, you're good, says Matthew Murray. Thanks, Matthew, that's appreciated. What, says David uh, Camley? David McCamley, sorry, I beg your pardon, David. What? Says he. <laughs> it's wonderful stuff. Now, we've only got two minutes of the show, so I'll what to the wise. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook. Sunday nights, 10 o'clock sharp. It made me laugh. I was uh, publishing until people would be uh, fed up with it, saying, We're on tonight at 10 o'clock sharp. And people were then contacting and said, When are you on, Scotty? <laughs> so they are sending love Scotty uh, says Alan Brown thanks Alan dinky do to you Mwah. love to you and your beautiful family in Washington there uh, good luck with your enterprising new venture says Kieran Scotty you should do the phone in through messenger on Facebook keep up the good work buddy to our last says Stephen Nunley boo hoo says William Black. Oh, William. Uh, get on, folks. As I say, if you want to make a donation at the Scotty McClure website, www.scotty- don't forget the hyphen, scotty-mcclure.com, it would be very much appreciated because it helps us get all this organised. But 
that's up to yourself. This has been Grand Scotty. Thanks for all the laughs, says Rob Dunn. No, Rob, thank you for all the laughs. This is the people's programme. This is what it's all about. And uh, you've got to have two hours, Scotty. You can't uh, be a bit of dinky-doo. How could you ever resist you? Sister <laughs> says, brilliant, dinky-doo, says John Gray. Halba bra, halba bra. Uh, absolutely. Well, what I'm saying is to our, our Gaelic people, Aichi Valley. Folks, thanks very, very, very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you tonight. Tell the world about it so that we can talk let's next Sunday night and get Facebook buzzing with the Scotty McClue Dinky Doo Show live for an hour a week um, at 10 o'clock sharp on the Sunday night. So until next week, may I wish you all God bless, Dinky Doo, and as we say in the best of circles, from me, Scotty McClue, and everybody here at the studio, ta -ra -las! <laughs>